be reviewing AMT's number eight Budweiser Chevrolet driven by Dale Earnhardt Jr. model kit. Uh, the level of skill for this model kit was a number two. Um, and honestly, for someone who hasn't done models in a long time, it felt like a number three. Um, I used to do model kits as a kid due to the lockdowns and everything else that's going on in the world. I decided to get back into the hobby and I realized how much I loved it and missed it. Um, I've had this kit and plenty others that I'm going to be going over in the channel that I've had since I was a kid. And when I found this, I thought this is perfect, especially with what was going on in the TV. NASCAR was playing all the old school races from back in the day. So just like back then, picked up a model kit, sat down on a Sunday, turned the old school races on and started building. Um, it was a lot of fun, but honestly, it was very, very challenging. For to, the honest review about this kit, I've built other model kits before, other NASCAR kits, uh, like Ravel's uh, monograms, and I just think they go together a lot easier and the instructions are done a lot better. Um, now, again, I haven't built that many model kits, uh, NASCAR model kits, so maybe for an advanced builder, this wasn't going to be that bad. Um, but for me, being newer uh, to the hobby and getting back into it, it was a little bit difficult for what I wanted to do. Um, honestly, I'm also a perfectionist as well, which didn't help because I like things to be perfect. And that can kind of take the, some of the fun out of it. But um, I really enjoyed doing this. I love the way it turned out. Um, it's not 100% perfect or accurate, obviously. But for what I wanted it to be on the shelf, it looks great. Um, like I said, it did take me a long time because I had to learn a lot of a lot of tricks and whatnot, um, and I'm going to be going over all that with you today. So uh, the first thing I'll go over is the kit was, like I said, the instructions weren't the greatest on the kit. Um, they were a little bit difficult to understand if you haven't built one of these cars before, so you had a, you kind of had to figure it out as you went. Um, but overall, like I said, it did come together pretty good. Uh, in the description, I'm going to put all the paints that I used. Honestly, I know a lot of people uh, are not fans of this, but I used what I had available, and I used Rust-Oleum's Gloss Apple Red for this. Um, I primed it in Rust-Oleum Primer, uh, and then Gray Primer, and then I painted it Apple Red. I, I tried to get as accurate as I could. I know a lot of people use Tamiya's and other paints, Um because I was limited to what I had access to and I didn't want to spend a ton of money um, starting out the gate, I figured, well, I'll just go the Rust-Oleum route. So I went that route and honestly, I think it came out really good for a Rust-Oleum can. Um, when I first opened the kit, my brother had started this years ago um, and he used what looks like a tester's can for the body. And that's all he did. We started the, he did the testers, he sprayed the body with testers and then it looked like he started some of the engine. So what I had to do was I stripped the body of the paint in some super, was it the, the purple stuff? Super clean. There you go. Um, my my kiddo calls it the uh, the tank of shame. So uh, I put it in the tank of shame, even though I didn't mess that one up, um, and cleared off all of the paint and sprayed it. And I think it came out really, really good. Uh, for everything else, it, like I said, it went together fairly well for what the, um, what the instructions called for. Uh, it took me a little bit for the windows I used for the window trim, Sharpie marker and, um, some flat, uh, some gloss or flat black. Um, I can't think of the name. Let's see. There you go. Model color. Here you go. So I use some model color. Uh, for some of the, the black window trim, and honestly, a Sharpie marker uh, or acrylic markers that I use that are here too. So um, those were able to get the effects that I wanted. Um, the decals, for as old as the kit was, and it was stored out in the garage at my parents, I thought they were going to be trashed and toast because I've heard some horrible rumors about, you know, as they age, they don't come on, they don't come off very well. Um, these, decals, these decals actually came out pretty good. Uh, the only one that gave me a lot of trouble was the the roof decal because as you can see, um, I turn it here. There's a little lip where the where the roof is um, right here, and the decal had to go around it. So I had to finagle that in there, and the hood, the decal actually went over the hood and split. So 
I had to reference a lot of videos to see how to get that done. And basically by using good old Mark Fit, getting the decal really loose and, um, you know, weakening the decal was able to get me into the creases and I can cut it and make it look really good. I had to do some touch-ups with some paint, um, but for my skill level and what I was able to accomplish, I was really happy with how it turns out. Um, like I said, I'm doing this for fun. Uh, I figured I could make a channel and give you a review of these kits um, and kind of go over some of the things that I learned and kind of go over the process. Um, I think for a kit that I haven't, or something I haven't done in, oh God, probably 15 years or so, uh, it turned out really well. Um, I was really scared of doing the decals. Cause like I said, I was afraid they were going to rip and then I have to buy replacement ones. Um, but it, like I said, it, it, they went on pretty smooth. Um, the only one that gave me trouble, like I said, was, was the roof decal. Um, and the hood decal was really hard to do. Um, interior wise, at the end of the video, I'll have some more close up photos for you for the details towards the end. Um, the interior isn't super detailed. I probably, if I had a little bit a uh, better skill set could have made this thing look insane because some of those guys are just top notch at what they do. But like I said, I'm still learning. I'm not quite there yet. So um, I used for my highlights in the, the dashboard um, acrylic marker, silver, just kind of give it that pop on the gauges. Um, I did paint the seat belt that came molded on the actual seat. Um, a lot of guys, you know, they use ribbon and, or aftermarket, what a photo etch. Uh, I didn't want to spend $300 to make this kit look good on the, on the shelf. So I just wanted to use basically everything I could out of the box, uh, and just make do with what I had. Um, the tires came out really well. The only thing I didn't like about this kit, and you can actually see it on the box is as it sits factory or stock, so to speak, is you have a really high or big gap in the front fender. Um, if you notice on mine, and like I said, I'll take pictures later, and from that you saw at the beginning of the video, I lowered the front of the vehicle and I lowered the back of the vehicle um, to kind of give it that better looking stance um, that it should have. It was, it was not easy to do. Um, I basically had to almost well, essentially cut into the tires to kind of get the suspension to sit within the tires. Um, and then I also, I did not use the the disc brakes that, the, the calipers that go behind the tires when you, when you put them in. Otherwise, the tires would have stuck out a little bit longer or out further than what they needed to on the body. Um, I didn't like that look, and I wanted this to look really mean and aggressive um, while sitting on the shelf. I was going to try to do, uh, replicate his... Uh, what, Richmond or Bristol win. I can't, I don't recall. I think it was, or maybe even Talladega win. Um, I don't remember, but I figured after, once I started it and I saw how good it looked, I didn't want to detail it up to look all damaged and everything. And I, I just wanted a pristine looking car on the, on the kit, on the, on the shelf. Um, and like I said, I think it came out really, really good. There are some things I notice obviously on here that I'm, I'm not happy about. Um, Compared to other kits, you could see, like, in the decal, the number eight, you'll see little trademarks, and that's because just the way AMT did their kits, if you ever notice, like, a Ravel kit, they don't have that, I guess because of licensing, I'm not 100% sure, um, so, you know, again, for the kit and what it what it is, I think it came out really, really good, is it, would I ever do one of these kits again? Probably not. Um, I would rather just do an older Ravel or monogram kit and it's just better quality, honestly. And you can always get aftermarket decals if it's too old from like Mike's decals. I've ordered a couple things from there. It's a great store. Um, model roundup is another one that has uh, a whole bunch of different things you can buy aftermarket. So, um, but like I said, for the kit and what it came out with or how it came out, I think it went really, really well. Um, for the finish, so it was gloss paint, but to get that finish, I was afraid to clear coat it. Um, I've learned some things with some other models that I was doing at the same time where my clear was just destroying the, the model out of the, and I was using Rust-Oleum clear. Um, I slowly found out that after the fact, 
that um, with Rust-Oleum paints, if you do not heat the can properly, the paint will, it looks like it fragments, almost like it's being just chewed up with by like just broken glass is really what it looks like. It's the best way to explain it. And I believe it's because of the, the heat. The paint comes out so hot, uh, it just chews it up. But you have to, so you have to, you know, cool off or that can so cold sitting there, you have to kind of bring it to temperature. Um, I don't know exactly what temperature, so I apologize. I should have been prepared, but um, you can Google it and it will ask you um, what temperature you need to bring it to. But honestly, I just took as hot as tap water as I could. I put it in a like a coffee tumbler, stuck the can in there, let it sit there for five minutes, held the can, made sure it was warm in my hand, um, and then shook it up really good. You obviously don't want to get a can boiling hot because the can will explode. So please be smart and don't boil a can and, and blow your hand off. So um, so what for the finish, I used uh, obviously the famous Future Floor Polish, which has also been renamed to Pledge and Revive It. And there's probably about three or four different uh, names that this goes by now. But I think the finish came out spectacular. Um, again, I've heard some things people complain about it or whatever. I'm not bringing this to a show. I'm not trying to make money off of this. This is for me. Um, and for what I wanted to do, this is absolutely perfect. So it looks great. It looks good. Um, and I think the finish came out wonderful. Um, so yeah, uh, towards the end of the video, like I said, I'm going to have a couple pictures. I'll show you the underbody of the vehicle. Um, I'll take the, the hood off so you can see the motor. Um, I didn't put a bunch of detail into the motor. Um, I, I just, you know, I did what the box is. I didn't put any, run any lines or anything like that. I didn't want to go crazy. I just kept it as stock as possible, mainly just for me to kind of get back on my feet, learn, um, and just kind of learn some tips and tricks and, and whatnot. So, um, like I said, I'll, at the end of the video, I'll put, uh, the Rust-Oleum paints that I used, um, some other tips that I used, like I said, for the, the molding, I used black Sharpie marker, taped it off. Um, Mark Fit, I definitely recommend that if you're using that for uh, putting your decal solution on. It's a great product. Uh, it, it worked perfect. Um, Tamiya, extra thin cement, I definitely recommend that for, um, you know, getting those glues. That and just honestly, for some of your other paints, your harder things to glue on, just... I mean, this is crazy glue, but any of your dollar store crazy glue will work, just the cheap stuff, um, and just be smart about it. Use a toothpick to get into those small areas so you're not pouring glue everywhere. Um, and then I also have uh, Insta Instacure. Uh, basically, this is for gap filling. So I didn't use it really much in this kit because everything else fit pretty good, but some other kits that I have coming up, um, I was able to use it for and it helped out really well. So, um, thanks for joining. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Uh, if you can, you know, like subscribe, I'm going to be coming out with some other videos and some other reviews of some other kits that I have going on. So if you like everything, like I said, um, please like, uh, subscribe. And I'm going to put out as much of these as I can. Thanks. And I'll see you guys soon.